In this video, we're going to see how to store an image in Firebase using cloud storage. Now, I'll make a little distinction here. When I first posted a video about Firebase database, I was surprised by the number of views I got, quite a few. And I got several comments where people asked about how to store an image in the Firebase database. And the short answer is, you can't because the Firebase database is used to just hold JSON type data or text data. However, you can use Firebase Cloud Storage to hold an image and then link the image from Cloud Storage to Firebase database fairly easily. And it doesn't have to be an image. It could be a video or any other kind of large file like an image. So in this video, we're going to do a hands-on example of storing an image in Firebase Cloud Storage. We'll have a part two video that follows this video where we will show how to link that image from Firebase Cloud Storage to Firebase Database. First, I've selected my project and I'm going to go to the storage option. I've explored authentication and database in a couple of other videos, so this one we're just going to focus on storage. I'm going to choose Get Started, and we see that it's going to tell us that we need some security rules. And here it's giving us a piece of advice that we really need to make sure that the user is at least authenticated. Because I've handled authentication in a prior video, we're good there. So after I choose Got It, I come to the storage screen. I can take a look at the rules. And to look a little bit closer, what we're seeing here is that the authentication has to be not null. In other words, user has to be signed in. We can tweak this line a little bit if we want, if we want to change that authentication, but we'll leave it like so for the moment. So I go back to files, and what I'm going to do is make a root directory. So we'll just say, uh, okay, we'll just say folder name images, something like so, and then choose add folder. So we can certainly add more directories. One common thing is to add a subdirectory for the user ID and then restrict access so that only the user ID who matches that directory can read or write to that file system. We won't cover that in this video, but nonetheless, it is definitely doable. The next thing we need to do is jump into our build.gradle file and add an implementation for Firebase storage. And then, of course, do a sync. I see I have a couple of other things unrelated to Firebase. I have a couple of other libraries that I need to update. So I'm going to pause the video and update those and then do a sync. But nonetheless, for Firebase, we just need to make sure that we have the Firebase core in Firebase storage. And of course, auth if we're using auth and also database if we're using the database. It looks like the sync went well. So I've navigated back to GPS Supplant, which is where we are saving our specimen. So I'm going to navigate to the save specimen to Firebase method. And now we can confirm we have indeed imported the correct libraries. Take a look down here. You'll see that we have a reference to Firebase database. We'll need a different reference for Firebase storage, but it's a similar concept. What we'll do is we'll say Firebase storage this time, and you see it comes up in autocomplete, which is a good sign. It indicates that our synchronization did happen correctly. And then we'll say .get instance, and then we'll say .get reference. Terminate with the semicolon, then put our cursor on Git Reference, hold Control Alt, and press V, and you'll see that it is going to create a variable, local variable, called Storage Reference. Now we can save the image. I need to do just a little bit more legwork to save the image. If I go down a few lines, I have an invoke camera method that I created a while back. And you see here we're getting a URI, which is where we're going to store the image that's acquired by the camera. So I choose Alt Enter split into assignment and declaration, and then I'll enter one more time. Uh, that's not going to work. I'll tell you what, we'll just take it like so. I'm trying to convert it to a field, so I'll just do this in a couple of parts. Go up towards the top, and we'll say private, boom, like so. And now we have it as a field. Control F12 will take me right back to the save method where I just left off. But nonetheless, now we know we have a URI. Okay, wonderful. So within the storage reference, I'm going to say storage reference dot child, and then we'll say images. Remember what images is. That was that first directory that we made. And then we'll do a concatenation and say URI dot get last path segment, which essentially is just getting that image name. Uh, now we will use our trick with control alt V over child to store this into a local variable, and we'll call this one image ref. Note it's also the same type 
is the variable we declared one line above. Both of these are storage references, which is just a point to a location somewhere in the Firebase database, or sorry, Firebase storage. Okay, with this now, we can say image ref dot put file and take a look. Note that that accepts a URI. Gosh, that's convenient. So I simply pass in the URI. Once again, control alt V, and that's going to give us back an upload task. Now, here's where things get a little bit interesting. I can say upload task dot add on failure listener. And inside of here, we can just uh, tell you what, before I forget, we'll do a semicolon. That's the easy part to forget. But inside of here, uh, we can create a new on failure listener anonymous inner class, just like so. Open curly and close curly. Use a little bit of alt enter magic, import class. And then a bit more alt enter magic and say uh, um, uh, override our methods uh, from that interface. So do us, of course, we want to do something here. Probably a good idea to do a toast or something of that nature. Uh, for the moment, I'll just put in kind of a dummy line so that we can at least do a bit of debugging. But we know we have a to do properly handle this error. Uh, I hate leaving failure handlers uh, empty like that because you eventually forget to go back and clean them up and then you commit them and then your app dies. You don't know why. So let's put a to do so we don't forget that one. One more we're going to do. Let's say upload task and then we'll say dot add on success listener. And of course, this is the one that we're hoping to see. So we'll say new on success listener. Notice there's one that has a generic identifier up there and that's the one that we want. So on success listener, just like so, and then we'll say upload task dot task snapshot uh, like so and then open and close curly open paren close paren a whole lot of symbols we have going on here and then a couple of alt enters to do a bit of magic one for import class and one for implement methods on success and this is where we will end up if our image uploads successfully just like so. Okay, so I hate to say, but things are about to get a little bit more nested, but nonetheless, it's okay because we want to get back the URL of our image where it was uploaded because we want to take that and associate that with our record in Firebase. So I'm going to say, well, let's see, we're receiving a task snapshot. So task snapshot, just like so. And then we'll say, get metadata. And control alt v we're getting to like that shortcut a lot, at least I hope so. And we'll simply call this one snapshot metadata, just like so. Okay, now we'll say image ref dot get download URL. Now what's going on with image ref here? Well, little trickiness, but we're within an anonymous inner class. And there's some rules about being able to reassign variables inside of an anonymous inner class. In other words, we're not allowed to. So what I need to do is run up to where this image ref is declared and make it final. So we see storage reference here, image ref, we'll say final. That means we can still invoke methods on this variable, but we cannot assign a new object to this variable. Do that and sure enough, look, red line goes away, we're in good shape. Let's use our friend control alt V one more time. And holy smokes, look, we have this thing called task URI and then download URL. Okay, uh, we need to do, guess what, yet another anonymous inner class here. So I'll say download URL, and then I'm going to say, guess what, add on success listener. Uh, so we're kind of getting a bit recursive here, but luckily we're getting to towards the end of our recursiveness. So we'll say new on success listener, and we'll go ahead and give it the URI generic type, open and close paren, open curly, close curly, and of course terminate with a semicolon right there. And then once again, our best friend, alt enter, implement methods on success, boom, there we go. Now take a look at this, URI dot two string, terminate with the semicolon, uh, control alt V, once again, control alt V, and we're just going to call this one image uh, reference. Guess what that is? That is essentially a URI that represents where this image was 
located. In other words, it's kind of like an HTTP. It tells you where the image is stored. So at this point, we can make a to-do here, and let's say update our Firebase DTO with the image location. We'll come back to that. Uh, we've done quite a bit of typing. Let's just make sure that we uh, that we are getting the results that we expect. So I'm going to snap a couple of breakpoints and start this in the debugger. Now I've taken the liberty of entering a new plant, the uh, Lindaris benzoin spice bush, a great Cincinnati native bush that makes a nice tea location, CVG airport. And now I'm going to choose save. So we click the save button. And over at our debugger, we say, is the user not equal to null? In other words, if the user is not equal to null, that means that the user has logged in. And we see that the user is indeed null, so the user needs to log in. So I choose F8, and that should take me down to the else part of this if test. And sure enough, there's the else part. And this is where we're going to initiate the login sequence. So I choose F9, and I tell it, yeah, go ahead and move me over to login. Just like before, we have some authentication options. I'll go ahead and choose sign in with email, which is an account that I created in a previous video. Email, and enter an email address. Of course, we'll only need to do this one time while the application is open. Password, and I just made up a password. Hopefully I remembered the right password, and then we choose sign in. Now it takes us back to our application, and the sign in was successful, so we go to our on activity result, let me just take this into a view where we can look at it in a little more detail. And now we're on the on activity result. So I choose F8 and F8 and F8 and F8. And we see we're going to acquire our user and then we're going to step into the save specimen to Firebase method. A lot of this we saw in a previous video. It's simply going to populate our DTO. Now, here's the new part, and it might be a little tricky to see where I've set breakpoints, but I set breakpoints in a lot of the areas where we uh, were working just a few moments ago. So get our storage reference. Looks good so far. Open a reference to that images directory and then the name of our image. Let's spawn an upload task, and then I'm going to choose F9 and continue. Okay, I feel pretty good right now because note that I put a breakpoint in the on failure listener and I put one in the on success listener, and the one that stopped is the one in the on success listener. So I choose F8, F8, and we're going to go into yet another inner class here. Uh, it's a little tricky because it pops out of that. I have to choose F9, and then it pops right back into this. Now, ooh, this looks really good. Uh, if I mouse over here, I see a URI of Firebase storage, so on and so forth. I should have put another line under here so I could look at this a little more closely, but no problem. I can go ahead and copy the value right here from the debugger. Now, let's open a browser window and see what's there. We'll take a look. It's the simulated image that we got from our camera. Let's go look at it. Look at this on the Firebase console side. In the Firebase console, I'm going to click on Images and take a look. Here's an image, and I can tell you that is the date that I'm recording this, and so I click, and once again, we're going to see some information, and there is the image. So I choose F9, and we'll let that go, and then we see our application is still responding. So in this video, we've seen how to upload an image to uh, Firebase. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and wrap up this video right now. I'm going to do a part two video that will follow this immediately, and that's going to be associating this image with a record in our Firebase database. It's a little trickier than it sounds. It seems like, wait a minute, we have the URI right here, right? And we store it in this image reference right here. Uh, can't we just add it to the specimen DTO that we're uploading right here a few lines down? And if you're looking sequentially, that makes sense, but that's not the order in which everything's going to run because this is a callback and this is a callback. So in reality, uh, this line is going to run first if we're looking at a fairly normal sequence with fairly normal network latency. Uh, then we're going to get this and then we're going to get this. So we actually have to save the specimen first, then get a key from saving it, uh, then we have to come back and update the specimen with the image URI. So we'll cover all of that in part two video, and we'll go ahead and wrap up this video here. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.